It is the 2nd of July in this day in Baptist history. We're reading about Detroit's first baptism. Our scripture reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 11 and 12. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. In 1818, Mr. Orison Allen and his wife penetrated the thick, unbroken forests of Michigan and were the first known Baptists in the territory of Michigan. They chose what is today known as Pontiac for a home site and built a crude cabin. In a short time, other Baptist pioneers who moved westward seeking land joined them, and in 1822, the first Baptist church in the territory was formed. The Reverend Ellen Elon, E-L-O-N, Galusha, G-A-L-U-S-H-A, a missionary from New York, had the honor of organizing that first Baptist witness in the new territory. The development of Michigan had been slowed by a discouraging report that had been made by the Survey General in 1815. He wrote, and I quote, the country is very low and swampy, with intermediate spaces of poor, barren, sandy land on which scarcely any, veg any vegetation grows except very small, scraggy oaks. It is so bad that no more than one acre out of a hundred, possibly not more than one out of a thousand, will admit of cultivation." End of quote. It is apparent that the Surveyor General, like many governmental bureaucrats, had not performed his labor. At any rate, reports such as this, and rumors that circulated because of it, had slowed pioneer interests. This fact is revealed in that as late as 1834, Detroit's population was listed as only 5,000. Baptist work in Detroit did not begin until 1827 when Henry Davis, a young graduate from the Hamilton Theological Institute, arrived on the scene. He was supported jointly by the New York Baptist Convention and the Baptist Missionary Society of Massachusetts. The waterway provided access to Michigan, but within the territory, five or six miles was a day's journey over almost impassable roads. It is difficult for us to envision what must have met the eyes of young Mr. Davis when he arrived on July 2nd, 1827. Reverend W. W. Everts, later in his life, wrote of a visit that he had made to Detroit in his youth. He wrote, and I quote, I remember the one horse French carts backed up to the doors of the best houses for the purpose of conveying ladies to church. Some sat on straw in the bottom of the cart others on buffalo robes spread on the straw." End of quote. Into the settlement, Henry Davis plunged with all the exuberance of youth. Slowly, progress was made as he visited many homes presenting the gospel, and in a letter to the Massachusetts Society, he wrote, and I quote, "...our assemblies were rather small at first, although sufficiently large to afford some encouragement." By visiting and becoming better acquainted with the citizens, our congregation was regularly increased. At present, which is October 1827, we have an assembly which will bear a good comparison with those of other denominations. Baptists were never known in Detroit until we commenced our meeting. Consequently, we could not expect to find a people prepared for us. Since my arrival, I have had the pleasure of baptizing three persons. We have called a council to meet on the 20th of October with a view of organizing a church." End of quote. When one considers the cosmopolitan population of Detroit in the early days, Baptist growth was encouraging. Of Detroit's 5,000 inhabitants in 1834, it was estimated that 800 were French, 800 Irish, 200 Dutch and Swiss, and a thousand were other foreigners who had not sought citizenship. The remainder of the population had come from various other states or territories. It would have been thrilling to witness the baptismal scene of the three converts to whom Henry Davis alluded, and I quote, 
The Detroit River has never witnessed a more impressive scene than that which took place on its banks in 1827 when Elder Henry Davis, the young and fiery shepherd of the Baptist believers in Detroit, baptized a group of converts in the waters of the straits to which our city owes its name. A picturesque and colorful group of fine ladies, fur traders and Indians, as well as the sober, fur citizens stood reverently by. Through the assistance of the civil governor, Lewis Cass, Pastor Davis, was enabled to secure lots for a building on the corner of Fort and Griswold Streets. Tragically, sickness soon seized the pastor and his work was terminated before he was able to complete a year of ministry. For several years, a small congregation struggled, but in 1834, the pastorate was assumed by Reverend Bob Robert Turnbull, Trumbull, T-R-U-M-B-U-L-L, -L, who was sent by the Home Mission Society. The building was completed and the work progressed from that time. The cosmopolitan makeup of city populations in North was not as receptive to Baptist preachers as were the populations of Southern cities. This becomes apparent when one considers the location of facilities and frugal appearance of buildings of the First Baptist Churches in Northern cities in comparison to the choice locations and lavish buildings of their southern counterparts. Two major reasons come immediately to mind. First, the populations had greatly different ethnic compositions, and secondly, the southern cities prospered spiritually from the great revivals under the separate Baptists. Our changing world still needs God's changeless word. To God be the glory.